what's my mission today? We'll tell you a bit about some of the adventures I've had uh, along the way and uh, some of the things I've learned and some of the things that hopefully will help you along the way, whether it's about teamwork, or leadership, uncertainty, resilience and the use of the debrief and hopefully there'll, there'll be a chance to, to ask some, some questions. A lot of people know our motto, who dares wins. Very pe few people know our ethos and our first and most important ethos is the continuing and unrelenting pursuit of excellence. We have to keep working at it. We can't just say, work yesterday or work tomorrow. We have to keep working at it, constantly improving. One of the worst things I've heard is, well, that's just the way we've always done it. Don't be afraid to ask for support. There'll be stacks of experience around you. Ask for it, ask for help, know where to go and get it. It's not a sign of weakness. We know that in the SES we can't do everything. We constantly have to go and get technical help, expertise, ask for help here and there. We're not afraid to, it's seen as a sign of strength. This was army life, it wasn't all spent topless, I just like putting some of these pictures up there. <laughs> I learned my trade in Northern Ireland, a great, a great learning ground for, for a young soldier because at the centre of the conflict was people, people were at the centre of it and I think that's, that stood the British military in good stead for, for, for wherever they've went because you can have all the weapon systems, more people, and force your will, but actually at the centre of it is people, and if you change attitudes and minds and speak to people, that's far more important than any weapon systems or anything you have. You'll see that in your workplace. You can have all the greatest things in the world to sell, but it's people that are at the heart of your success. I was in Northern Ireland uh, one, <coughs> one evening, it was about four o'clock in the morning, I was there with three other guys and I, hiding in a bush looking at things, uh, it wasn't in my spare time, it was in the military, <laughs> and uh, these two tall, dark, bearded, handsome strangers crawled in and said, right kid, we'll, we'll take it from here, we're the SES. And I thought, right, there's a whole, there's a whole nother level here, you know, there's a Premier League going on. Much like in Scotland, we look down and we look at the Premier League and we think, that's <laughs> just like... And I thought, wow, I just want to aspire to be that, you know, I want to test myself at that level. I just want to be the best version of, of myself. So without really knowing what I was doing, I put my papers in for selection. It's a voluntary thing and, and signed up for SES selection because I knew I wanted to, to be part of this. I was still riding the euphoria of having passed selection. I was only three months into the job, I had my blue belt, my beige berry, and uh, I was only halfway through my counter-terrorist training. I was only 23 on selection. I was probably only about 24 by this time. And they gave me a pager, shows how long ago it was. And they said, Colin, you're on the UK counter-terrorist team, so there's a pager. If it goes off, four nines, that's a counter-terrorist incident, you need to react to it. I was like, well, okay. And they sent me on this forward air controllers course brilliant you got a shot of flying a jet and pointing lasers at targets and blowing them up it was great fun and I was up in the back of this jet and then my pager went off I uh, said you're, you're gonna have to take it down so they came down I phoned up exchange and I was like hi hi there it's Colin the new guy um, <laughs> my, my pagers just went off and it's uh, it's four nines or it's four sixes upside down I don't know and they said no it's four nines it's a hijacked jet it's coming into Stansted and you're the closest one there so get there and hold the fort I thought what? <laughs> but like get there and hold the fort uh, I was like okay so I got on my black kit and I chucked it on my Darth Vader kit in the back of the Range Rover and I hightail into Stansted and as I get there there's a massive crowd round Stansted Chief, Chief Super's there he's trying to keep crowds at bay he's got police cordon round there and he's looking at me as I'm coming and he's trying to see behind me and he's like where's, where's the rest of them I'm like yeah I'm in the advance party they're, they're just coming he's like uh, right okay get in the main hangar and give the guys a brief in 10 minutes I was like yeah, we'll do. <laughs> Give the guys a brief in 10 minutes? I'm 24, I've been here three months. What am I going to brief them on? And sometimes life's like that. I just take you and just drop you right in at the deep end. Sink or swim, we've all been there. So this was my sink or swim moment. I think, right, okay, there's only two ways this can go. I can either kind of tiptoe out there and go, guys, I don't know if you know, I'm, I'm only 24, I'm only three months in the job. So if you point me in the way of the coffee machine and you guys deal with it, I thought that's not going to fly going to have to let them know, enthuse confidence, let them know the SES are here and we've got this. Planning. Think about who to bring in for a plan. Even if it's just for that planning period, bring them in. Have you got anything to offer? They might not have, but they might just have that golden nugget, that little piece that will just get you over the line. Might be an aircraft expert, might be a translator, might be something, but bring them in for the planning phase because they might just have something to offer. I was in my military career in 1989 to 2005. Not that long, managed to squeeze quite a lot in. 
to uh, a lot of operational tours. I like this quote from Churchill, success isn't final, failure's not fatal, it's the courage to continue that counts. You've got to keep going, it's going to be change, you're going to have bad days, you're going to fail sometimes, you've got to keep going, you've got to put one foot in front of the other. We do it all the time, we have to keep going, we have to keep moving forward. We're all more adaptable and versatile than we think. We don't like change. There's something inherently scary about the unknown, but only until we've done it. First time you jump out of a plane, first time you public speak, and after that it becomes inherently less scary. That's the same with everything. So that means that the thing itself isn't scary. It's what's going on in our mind that's the scary part. So we're far more adaptable than we think. Since I've left the military, I've been involved in all sorts. TV, uh, consultancy, writing books, public speaking, motion capture for video games. And all of those in their own little individual siloed part would be a bit scary. Motion capture is a good example. Started off with a chance phone call about 11 years ago. Got phoned up by a researcher from Rockstar Games. He said, Colin, are you interested in doing motion capture? I said, yeah, totally. They went, come in on Wednesday for an audition. And then went and Googled what motion capture was. <laughs> I've been doing it ever since. I'm their main mocap mo guy. This is me, it's, uh, Arthur Morgan in Red Dead 2. For anybody that plays uh, video games, done the Grand Theft Auto series as well. But we can adapt. There's loads of things we can, we can do. It's the building blocks that are important.